Well, something along uh, more modern lines. Uh, Barry Golovsky is one of the first guests I ever had on my show in 1979. And Barry's on my Facebook. He found me. So he's going to come back to the show in a couple of weeks. Excellent. Barry had Fusion Magazine back in the 70s. I don't know if you ever saw it anywhere. No. There was Crawdaddy. Remember Crawdaddy? I remember Crawdaddy, yep. So Fusion was like a competitor of Crawdaddy. And when Janis Joplin and Brian Jones and Jimi Hendrix died, he put out a book, No One Waved Goodbye, Fusion Press. I have two different copies of it. Lou Reed essayed this incredible essay by Lou Reed. And I might have said to Lou in, during the interview, you know, essaying more essays from Lou Reed. I mean, the guy is a great writer that we don't see enough of. Because, well, in Bla Barry Glovsky's Fusion, much like Olmsted, he has rare Lou Reed poetry. So I have copies of this because I'm going to bring you some I know you don't have. And it's like, whoa. These magazines, people don't realize, there's like these great articles that just kind of get, they were saved, if you will. Mm -hmm. They might be lost, but they're not really lost. They can be found, mm -hmm. be it Herman Melville or Lou Reed. That's, that's great. So he, so he published some Lou Reed poetry. That's, that's, that's sort of Lots of it. Because mm -hmm. Lou and the Velvet Underground were living here in Boston. They were like the house band at the tea party. People don't realize that. They think of them as a New York. Yep. As, as, as a do I, unfortunately. So that's, that's interesting. So, yeah. they, they spent many years, uh, a good portion of their time in Boston playing the Boston Tea Party. So much so that the big top 40 station, WRKO, had this uh, party. They played it. It wasn't the music for, their, for a top 40 station. <laughs> for but sure. in the, in the uh, gatefold of the compilation album put out by RKO, there's the Velvet Underground and Lou Reed. I mean, that's, that's, you know, it's just kind of odd. That's, yeah, that's interesting, because, yeah, he, he's always, I mean, he's always described as a New York, you know, sort of a New York street poet and all that stuff, so, yeah. <laughs> I do like to talk about our authors and their lives, and we haven't talked about that. You like Iggy Pop and David Bowie. Yes, I do. I like, I like a lot of different kinds of, of particularly rock music, and a lot of rock music sort of from, for lack of a better word, from sort of the classic era, yep. And I've got, a, I've got a young son who's nine years old who's a phenomenal music fan. He started turning me on to, he's gone deep into the crazy world of Arthur Brown. Oh, Brown. man, I love that stuff. He, he loves it, too. I only knew one song by, by Arthur Brown, which was Fire. But my, my son has gone deep into the, he's introducing me to all these other songs. Nightmare Delirium, I think, is one of them. So my, my, my son's also a huge Blind Faith fan, so I've been hearing a lot of Well, them. I manage the producer of Blind, Blind Faith. The late Jimmy Miller. Okay, wow, yeah. So, but here's something for your son to do. Go to allmusic.com, which both sons aren't into Arthur Brown, just one. One, one son into Arthur Brown. My other son is, is a, um, great, in, great into sports. He loves sports, and he's also um, starting to get more into acting. So also, they're that's fraternal. Sort of, that's, yeah, exactly. They are they're very, not quite identical. fraternal. Yep, they're not. No well, wonder. if he goes to allmusic.com, do you know the site? I, I don't know. Rmusic.com. All okay. music. A L L M U S. Okay, allmusic.com. Uh -huh. uh, go to Arthur Brown, and I wrote most of the reviews. He, he's, oh, he's, that's great. So, now, you know who the drummer was on Fire? I don't know. Carl Palmer. Was, oh, yeah, okay. So there's an Emerson, Lake, and Palmer box set, and they recut Fire. Okay, oh, For I, the four CD Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, because he played with the crazy world of Arthur Brown. Aha, <laughs> um, uh -huh, I got it. <laughs> I'll tell our audience, we've got 10 minutes left. See, that's, <laughs> we got the signal there. Uh, Lillian Roxon is one of the greats. She passed away, but she wrote the Rock Encyclopedia. So she started this thing that all music kind of continued. I was honored to write so many reviews, about 5,000 for all music, because Lillian started this. You will love reading the AMG site. And Lillian Roxon's book on Arthur Brown, she had that he was in a crane and would have a real spectacle for a show. Uh, there's a lot of his music that your son might not even know about because he kept putting records out years later. Yeah, it's, it's, it's um, no, I know he's, he's, I'm trying to think of what the band that he... Kingdom you know, Come. Kingdom Come, yeah. He's, he, he likes that band as well, although he hasn't dug as deep. He's, into, he's into it. Oh yeah, he's God. <laughs> I mean, you know, I don't think any of my 600 guests know Arthur Brown. <laughs> well, no, well you, you, know. you should you should have my nine year old son Theo on. He'll he'll. Uh, <laughs> We're gonna have Arthur Brown on. Are you gonna have Arthur Brown? On? I would. I mean, I'd love to if he's touring. You know, because I know I, I saw I, my my son urged me to try to find tour dates from. I saw that he played Glastonbury. I think a year ago. So he's obviously still out and about. So. Yeah. <laughs> Tomorrow night I have another author on, but before my author, I believe we have Bruce Kulick of Kiss calling in. You know the band Kiss. I do know the bad kiss. K K <laughs> and he's in Grand Funk Railroad, and they're playing here next week, so the show's mm -hmm. going to begin five or ten minutes with Bruce Kulick and my, my author that'll be here. Great. 
Um, so we have fun. I think you see that. That you know, I like to explore your books, but I like to explore. You know, it's great. Your kids are into the music, and you are into. I don't think kids today really understand how important Arthur Brown was. You know, it's funny. My my son, the way he he took the law and ran with it, but he started to get into things like Mark Bolin and Alice Cooper. And I said, I said, I think that there's a guy. Um, Arthur Brown, who wrote a song that seemed to really influence our, um, Alice Cooper's stage show and so forth, and so I showed him the song Fire, and as I said, he just took the ball and ran with it. Okay. Now, don't you find it odd that Jimi Hendrix's Fire gets more airplay on classic rock radio when it wasn't a real hit, when Arthur Brown should be on classic rock all the time? Yeah, I feel, as I've, as I've been turned on to a lot of his music, I find it, inc I mean, I think it's a real injustice that he's been lost in the shuffle because I think he's a, uh, his, his sound is great. He's got a great sound and, and he's obviously really influential musically too. Oh, the other thing, so mentions my son's a huge Deep Purple fan. It is obvious to me that Ian Gillen, when he was with Deep Purple, is drawing on Arthur Brown with all that, you know, that screaming, that, um, so. I never so, thought of that. Yeah, song, songs like um, Child in Time where he's, ah, those are very, very Arthur Brown-like. I, I would never have known that until. Um, <laughs> now this week, the first three Deep Purple albums with Rod Evans have been re-released from Captain Beyond. Have they? Okay, well. Wow. Hush, the Joe Self yep. song. Yeah. So they're, they're out like in four days. I just reviewed them. Um, it's tremendous. Hush is just this great production. So you'll know the answer to this. Is it Rod Evans singing on Kentucky Woman? Or is that yes. A, okay, that's what I, okay, yeah. That's, mm -hmm. Yeah, for some reason, the musicians pushed Rod Evans out from what I'm gathering. I'm, I'm, I'm really into this because... Uh, there's a book called The All Music Guide to Rock. And I think I'm the only critic in the world, to, and I, it's in the book, thank God. The Book of Taylorson, which has Kentucky Woman, I think I'm the only critic to, to note that these guys kind of copied Vanilla Fudge. That's, yep, Vanilla I can, I can. Fudge and Shadow Morton were doing Beatles and Donovan and slowing them up and Sonny and Cher and slowing them up and making them really mysterious. Mm -hmm. And Deep Purple seemed to latch on it a year later. That's, so you're saying Hush came after, like, Keeps Me Hanging On. Is that, is that, yes. yeah, that's, oh, that's, that's, I can, I can picture it. I can see it. But I think what happened was it hit in England first before it hit in America or something. So England was hip to it. And Deep Purple started doing these symphonies. Now, to be fair to Deep Purple, they took it into a different direction, but they covered Donovan. They covered the Beatles. And I don't think any critic ever picked up on it. And, it's so it's so important now. Vanilla Fudge. I'm taping them probably next month. We taped them a couple of months ago. They were on their farewell tour. So, so is is it the same? Is it the original Vanilla Fudge lineup? Is it the same? It is and it isn't. Uh, Mark Stein is in there. Uh, Vinnie Martell and uh, Mark Stein's a singer. Vinnie Martell and Common Apache. But Tim Bogert decided to stay off of this tour, so they have another bass player. But they've had a patchwork band for a while. But this is three of the originals, and Tim's there, but he's not touring. It's oh. fast. You should catch them, though. I, I, I will catch them. If, if, when they come to New York, I'll, I'll see them for sure. So, yeah. They played here at the Regent, and they let me tape them. They like to tape everything pos for posterity, so they let me. They were thrilled I had the camera. They did You Keep Me Hanging On long version. Then they did it for the encore, You Keep Me Hanging On short version, because they were doing Jimmy Kimmel. They had to practice the 45 RPM version. I'm thinking every band should do the long version and then the encore, the shot version. Yes, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> it worked. Uh -huh. That's cool. So uh, as you're doing your book on Olmsted, what were you listening to? You're, you're going to love this. Um, uh, great question. One of the main things I listened to was when I did the Civil War chapters, I really wanted to get into a Civil War mindset. So. I initially tried to listen to some old, you know, Battle Hymn of the Republic and so forth. It just didn't move me, didn't work for me. So I listened to the band. I listened to ah. Whispering Pines, um, The Night They Drove Old Dixie Down, Unfaithful Servant. It just gave me that, that it gave me the Civil War vibe. I recognized they're Canadian. I recognized that they are, op um, you know, recorded that album in 1972 or whenever it was recorded. But for me, it was a better window into the Civil War than ever, anything I could imagine. I listened to that a lot when I was writing the Civil War chapters. Yeah. Rob Fraboni did a great job. The engineer, do you know Rob Fraboni? Was he, was he the engineer on that band album? The, the, mm. A lot of band albums. Mm -hmm. And um, Bob Dylan's Planet Waves, he lives in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. He's a good friend and he's, because I work with Jimmy Miller, um, Fraboni did Goat's Head Soup. Okay, yeah. Great. And that's where they met. Mm -hmm. And then I met, Keith Richards introduced me to 
to Rob. Mm -hmm. And now we've been dear friends ever since, but it's kind of fun. Even though I work for Miller, I always tell people Keith Richards introduced me. I mean, that's, that's how great. can you, you know, I yeah, met Keith yeah, once, but yep. <laughs> Joe, you have to meet Rob. It's like, <laughs> hi, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. But I will tell him that you wrote this book listening to the band records. Yep, he will really enjoy that. Yep, those the Civil War chapters particularly. Otherwise, very far afield for Central Park, I listen particularly to Frederick Delius, a classical composer who, who, has, who has very much a grasp of that sort of pastoral feel. But for the Civil War chapters, they get in the mood, that's listen to the band. That was <laughs> the way to go. That is so cool. What'd you listen to during D Nader? <laughs> I don't remember what I listened to. What would be right for Nader? I can't, can't remember what I listened to to do that. Um, I know it was I Pink Floyd. Maybe Greenspan. Billy Bragg or something. Yeah, I'm a big oh. Pink Floyd fan, but I think for Nader, he'd want to listen to the Billy Bragg. <laughs> so Pink, side, Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon for Greenspan? Yeah, there, there we go, exactly. <laughs> the, I, 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 I see exactly where you're going with that. Money, right? Which the OJs, a, yep, money, yep, money, money. Yep, those are exactly. There's a lot of... <laughs> did you? <laughs> no, I, I did not, but that would have okay. been... Greenspan, actually, it's funny you should say that. Greenspan, actually, there was a music, uh, there was music behind that. I listened to a lot of swing-era jazz because almost, uh, or rather, Greenspan was in a, in a swing band. So I had to really get myself, he was in a band um, called the Henry Jerome Orchestra, so I had to get to know their music. But I also started listening to acts like Benny Goodman. And Greenspan, believe it or not, in high school, uh, he hung out with Stan Getz. So, yeah, <laughs> they played music together. You can imagine which one was better. But um, Wow. Yeah. And so I listened to a lot of Stan Getz while I was writing the Greenspan book, not really to inform my writing style, but more just because I needed to know about that music and needed to know more about it to, um, you know, to, to do justice to Greenspan's jazz period. <laughs> That's important. You know, Justin, we've got like two minutes left. I usually have authors read from their book. You can or whatever you want to do with the next two minutes because you're so much fun to talk to. You know, well, thanks people the same. can <laughs> read the book. You know, <laughs> They can go to the library. And, oh, what's your website? My website is justinmartin1.com, and I should also mention, yeah, Justin Martin and the number one. The number one. Yep, dot com. And then there's also a Facebook page called, it's as simple as just go to Genius of Place, the book's title. Ah, and, yeah. Genius of Place. Yep. Great, great title. I mean, that took a little bit of genius to come up with Genius of Place. Well, thanks. I appreciate your saying that. It was a lot of, lot of different titles went, went by the wayside as we were trying to come up with that one, and that was, that was a winner. We knew it when... when um, when, when we came up with it. <laughs> because it's really new and different. Uh, I've never heard the, the term genius of place. Yeah, it, it's actually, you know, it's an ancient term, and it was a term that was used often in landscaping. Oh. Um, but it was used to describe, oh, wow. yeah, it's, and it was used to describe, you know, the spirit. Let's, let's try to draw out the spirit of a place. It's a term Olmsted often used. It was used in that fashion. Let's draw out the genius of the place. But, of course, I flipped it around in a kind of modern way and made it, he is the genius of the, uh, you know, of place. Uh -huh. So, yeah. So yeah. for Monopoly, Boardwalk, Park Place, and Genius of Place. Yeah, there we go. There's, there's that. You get those three, put some hotels on them, and you're you're, <laughs> you're safe. We've got maybe 60 seconds left. Where are you going from here? Uh, in terms of, of writing the next book, I don't know. I'll, I'll figure out. I'm looking forward to figure out what what topic um, sort of sort of gels. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm sort of I'm on, I'm on the hunt at this point to try to find a, a good a good next subject. I think I'll. I really, I, I love doing books about people that are varied. I think I'll have a tough time finding anyone who's had quite as varied a life as Olmsted did. And that's that's sort of a setting a high bar as far as having a, a varied existence. <laughs> you put a lot of effort into this and a lot of investigative reporting. Uh, I did. The visual radio. What do we got? A minute? Or should we wrap up? And it's uh, Justin Martin, Genius of Place, The Life of Frederick Law Olmsted, and of course. Nader, Crusader, Icon, Spoiler, and Mr. Greenspan's Greenspan, book yeah, it's, it's on called, the floor with Alan called, Greenspan. That's, right. that's our show, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for being here. Yeah, on. I enjoyed it a lot. Thanks.